job in Rome. And um, if you're like me, you've got always got the issue of what do you pack, what don't you pack. Uh, I'm one of those guys who will sit with bags of stuff look through all my camera gear and I'll want to take it all. I'll think, oh, but I might need that lens, I might need that camera body, I might need that flash, I might need that video light. Like, it's very, very hard to kind of consolidate it down and by the time I get on a plane, I'm carrying three bags and I paid a lot of money to get extra bags on the plane and I'm crying because I've got to carry all this heavy gear around me. So recently I've started to challenge myself, how little can I get away with? What's the least amount of gear I can travel with and still get good results? And this is just my travel setup for photography and video. Just this little bit. If I have to go somewhere and I can't take very much with me, this I found is a pretty good compromise and I can do most things with it pretty well, but it's not gonna break my back. So I use a little low pro bag, it's the Tahoe BP150 and in this little bag I can pretty much shoot uh, most things, natural light, uh, photography and video. So I take one camera and one lens with me. I know that you know that's, that's a hard choice for most photographers to make but what I've settled on at the moment is this. It's the Canon 80D and uh, paired with the Sigma 18-35 f1.8. And the reason is, is because with this crop on this camera, I'm sitting at about 28 mil to roughly 50 mil. And all of that right up to 1.8, which with photography and stills is a great kind of run and gun camera that I can do everything with. Um, I've got it set up with uh, picture profiles for uh, video. So I can switch between, you know, Canon standard, I'm recording my raw files if I'm running around and shooting stills, or I can flick it straight over to video, change the picture profile to something flatter that I can grade later. And in one camera body, I can pretty much uh, be comfortable shooting photography and video on the go. Now is the ADD the best camera in the world? No. Uh, it's a crop sensor camera, it's kind of a middle range camera, but this camera is set up very, very well, I find, for video uh, in particular. Uh, which makes it a great all-rounder. I mean, I've got the Canon 5Ds and I absolutely love using them for setup shots and getting that full frame look. But in terms of run and gun, this is great. And the biggest reason this camera is amazing is because of the autofocus. It's absolutely incredible. It's the best I've, I've ever used on any camera. Uh, face detection, being able to track faces that are moving around uh, and keeping a shallow depth of field, it does an amazing job with that, which makes you very, very mobile and the setup times on shots are brought way down. That's why this is my choice. On top of that, I carry a Tiffin variable ND filter. This is great for stills and for video, to be honest. Um, being able to cut out some of the light that uh, comes in to be able to shallow the depth of field for stills and for photography is really, really useful. So if I'm shooting video, I'll snap this on the front and it just means that while I'm running around, I've got the settings I, I, I like in camera. And if I'm turning a corner and it's a brighter or a darker street, I can just be dialing that in or out with the ND on the run instead of fiddling with settings as much. Plus, I can bring back some of that uh, shallow depth of field if I want it. For audio, I use the, uh, the Rode VideoMic Pro. This is an older version of the Rode VideoMic Pro. But this is how I have it set up. So I bought a, um, what's... Uh, fairly unglamorously known as a dead cat for it, which is just a wind jammer. So this means I can mount this on top of the camera, like so, to get uh, on-camera audio, if that's what I want, like that. So if I'm running around, I could be doing interviews on the street or anything, then uh, I can just be right up close to someone's face, and that's the other great thing about a wide angle, is I can get really close to people and be capturing audio directly into camera if I'm plugging this in the side. But I've also got another set up so that I can externalize the audio as well. I have the Zoom H1. So this little guy is a professional audio recorder but just tiny, pocket sized. Uh, just runs on one AA battery and a little micro SD card in the side and records really, really good audio. I don't usually use the mics on top of this but what I've done is I've attached two strips of Velcro here and two strips of Velcro onto this because you guessed it, what I do is team these up. So I've got the, the Rode video mic plus the zoom uh, snapped together. If I jack this straight into 
the road, the the the, um, the audio that I'm going to get out of this mic is going to be much better than the onboard audio from this. Plus, it's going to be more directional. So this sometimes can sit on top of my camera, recording separate audio if I'm close in someone's face and it's running straight into here. The problem with jacking this straight into the camera is the camera is not really set up to capture quality audio as much as it is quality imagery. So it'll compress that audio down in a, in a not very nice way. So taking it straight into this means I can just arm this and it's capturing quality audio separately on the top here, which I can sync later, or uh, and while the camera's running separately and recording video. But the third option I have for audio, if I unplug, so if I use this on top of the camera to capture reference audio, I've got the Rode SmartLav Plus, and it needs a little adapter, which I think is called SC3. Basically, that means I can jack this little bit straight into the Zoom H1, and I have a fully functioning uh, lab mic, which will record directly into itself quality audio. So I can hook this on somebody that I'm interviewing, like so, get them to pop this in their pocket, just hit record, there's a little hold on the side to make sure they don't turn the button on and off again, pop this in their pocket and I've got the camera running separate audio, this running quality audio to make sure I'm picking up everything they say. So within this little bag, I have pretty much everything that I'm gonna need for uh, video stills and audio. Uh, another little um, solution I like, so this is like a little, um, it's a little tabletop tripod from Manfrotto. And what I've done is I've just attached uh, a cold shoe mount on the top, just twisted that on. And what you can do, which I found quite helpful, especially if I'm collecting ambient sounds from streets, just that I want to cut into the video separately. If you attach this like so to your handle, just so you've got a bit of a handle, and then you take your Zoom H1 and you Velcro him on the top, jack that straight in. What you can do, and then this is why I just keep headphones in here as well, I can put uh, a bit tangled, but you get the idea. I can put headphones in the side here, and I can actually run around and capture quality audio on the street like this directly into the zoom. So if I want to get ambient or um, street sounds or anything that's going on, perhaps as a musician playing, and I would like to use some of that as a bit of a soundtrack behind everything else, this is a nice little kind of very simple run and gun. I'm going to capture good audio as I go around, just on a little handle like this. Or alternatively, I could just pop the legs open and that will direct a little bit, and I could pop this down on a pavement so I'm not sort of walking around with it, I'm just capturing ambient audio as we're going around. So that's that little uh, setup. Lots of solutions for video and audio. Other little bits in my bag, extra camera batteries always, obviously extra SD card. Uh, I've got this little, uh, it's an SD to lightning port connector because I like to uh, edit photos as I'm going around. So I'm always shooting both on uh, um, JPEG and on RAW within my camera, but I shoot medium JPEG. And the reason for that is because I've always got the RAW to back up. I can go home later, stick it all in Lightroom and really edit those and, and make them quality. But if I want to just edit on my social media platforms, throw it on Facebook or Instagram as I'm going around, I can snap the SD card out, pop it in here, pop it straight into either uh, an iPad or an iPhone as I'm going around and I've got Lightroom mobile load up in here and I've got a bunch of apps on my phone. I can just be pulling the images on, editing them quickly through apps and posting them straight online so I can keep people in touch of what I'm doing. This is the only other piece I'll take because this is my stabilization option. So, especially for when I'm shooting video, I need some kind of uh, way to stabilize the shots because if I handhold everything, it's just gonna be shaky. So this is a monopod, uh, which uh, it's the, what make is this? It's uh, Kenro, very, very good quality. I think I picked this up for about 100 pounds and uh, very good build quality. And it's a great option if I can only take, I can't take tripods plus sliders plus everything else. This is a great uh, one hit wonder just to give me some stabilization options. So little feet at the bottom, I can pop the feet out. And you can see like I can stand this right up and I can have a very good stable shot wherever I am. It's got a fluid head. I can be doing things, if I loosen this bottom here, you can see that the bottom feet are able to rotate around its axis, and that means that when I'm, when I'm 
trying to do sort of movement shots. If I haven't got a slider with me, I can do push-in shots like this using the fluid head. Uh, I can do, if I, if I take the uh, camera off the plate and I rotate the plate 90 degrees so that the camera is facing forward like this, I can even do slider shots like this, just to give it some movement as I go around. And if I tighten this up, obviously you don't really want to put a camera on this and just leave it standing. So you think, well, it doesn't really make for a very good um, uh, tripod that's sort of freestanding on its own. What I've got with me are two, these are wrist weights, which obviously you can put around your wrist while you're exercising, but I obviously don't use those for that. What I do is if there's a railing or a chair or a table leg or something, what I can do is I can take these and I can actually strap it round the, the chair or the table leg plus the monopod and strap it to the side. Uh, one at the top, one at the bottom, and then it will freestand and sit on its own. So for time lapses or anything like that, that's great. The other thing that these are great for is I can turn this monopod uh, it's never going to be as good as a glide cam or anything like that, but if I wrap these round, these weights round the monopod, I can effectively use this as a as a poor man's steady cam. So if I'm holding this loosely, if I'm if I'm holding this sort of between thumb and forefinger, I can get some fairly stable steady cam stuff as I move around. And I'm using the weights here at the bottom just to give it some anchorage at the bottom, so that it's always pulling down, and I can try and get some steady cam moves out of it like this. So this gives me. Uh, a tripod, if I strap it to a railing or a chair, it gives me steady cam. It's not going to be as good as a proper steady cam, but it will give me some options. And I can have slider moves side to side, or I can have push and moves forward and backward. And uh, for what this is, and for the weight that it is, it gives me a load more options than if I was trying to carry tripods with all the adapters and everything else that I need. I think this would be a great setup for, for journalists or uh, documentarians, anyone who needs to move fast and travel light and be able to capture a bit of everything as they go. I don't do a lot of techie videos normally, but I just thought it'd be useful to talk about what, what my little setup is when I want to travel light. And I'd love to hear what yours is too.